We're going to be tackling a many-to-many -many relationship between two tables. And the example that we're going to be working on is we're going to continue to work with our user model and user table. But now we're going to add a new independent table for roles. And typically in an application, you're going to have a set number of roles that a user could be attached to or detached to as they gain or lose permissions in your application. We're not going to be tackling that part of the application, but we're going to be tackling the database and the relationships necessary to make something like that work. So first and foremost, like I said, we're going to be using our user model and our user model ships with Laravel. So we don't have to touch that for now. Let's make a new model for our roles. Jump to the terminal and let's say PHP artisan, make me a model with a migration and we're going to call it role. Obviously singular. We've covered all of this. Let's jump back to PHP storm and let's modify the migration, create roles table. We're going to be keeping this very simple. We're just going to say as a string, we'll have a name and that's it. Nothing else in a many to many relationship. You actually have two totally independent tables that are not related to one another. There is a third table, which is what's called a pivot table that connects them. However, as you see here in this roles, we're not going to add a user ID and the same way we're not going to go to the users table and add a role ID. There's no necessity for that because we're going to actually make a third table. So let's make that now. We've never really done this before, but let me run PHP artisan. You can actually just make a migration. If we look here. We have this makes migration. So let's do that now. PHP artisan make migration. So what are we going to call this pivot table? Now in Laravel, the convention for this is that we have a role and we have a user. So that is exactly it. We want to keep them in alphabetical order. So role, of course, R comes before you and we're going to keep them singular. So it's not roles users, but it's rather role singular user. So that's what we're going to call our table role user all together. So what are we going to name the migration? We're going to say create the role user table and then we can pass in the create flag and say we're going to create the role user table. So the role user table is what's going to put together our two other tables, our user and our role table. So let's run that now. Now this is not going to create a model for us. This is simply creating a migration. So let's take a look at that now. Create role user table. Perfect. So this table only needs two things. We'll say table. You're going to need an unsigned big integer for the role ID and we're going to need another one for the user ID. Makes sense, right? So each one is going to need to have a reference to a role and a reference to an ID and that's it. Let's leave the timestamps for now. These are optional, but sometimes in your projects, you're going to want to know when you granted that user that particular permission. That's where the timestamps will come in handy. However, out of the box, they're not going to work, but I'll show you how to make those work. All right. So let's jump back to the terminal. PHP artisan migrate to apply those changes. And if we jump to table plus hit refresh. So now we have our roles table and we have this role and user. So very quickly in my roles table, I'm just going to add just a random role. I'm going to say maybe it could delete a user could be one role and another one could be that it could add a user. Right. So we'll say that those are the two roles that our application can do. It can delete a user and it can add a user. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to hit save, head back to PHP storm and here we are. All right. So let me close all this up. Let's move over to our routes file and let's do something here. So let's say that we have the following. First of all, we need to create a user because we don't have one. So let's take care of that. First and foremost app user class. We'll say create me that class. And if I jump back to Chrome and just hit refresh, now we should have a user in our table and let's check this out users. And sure enough, we have this user with ID of one. So that way we don't have to create any more users from here on out. All right. So back to PHP storm. So now that we have a user, we can fetch our user by saying, go ahead and grab the app user first. Just give me the first user in the database. So now we have that user and now let's grab some roles. Let's grab all the roles. How about that? So roles are going to be app roles all. And this will return a collection of all of our roles. Let me die and dump that so you could see what we have back to Chrome. And sure enough, we have a collection with two items in it and each one will be obviously our delete user role. And we're going to have a second one, which is going to be the add user role. 
So how do we attach this? That's just it. Let's set up that relationship. That's what we've been working towards in all of this setup. So let's go to the user model. And right down here, we'll add a new method called roles. And what do we do here? Well, we're going to return this. It belongs to many. So it belongs to many role class. And the same exact thing. If we jump to the role, let's go ahead and say, well, this belongs to many users. OK, so we'll have users. We'll say return this belongs to many user class. So now we have this relationship that we can use to attach them. So let's do that now. Now that we have our user, let's say user roles. We're going to use that relationship and then we're going to say attach the roles. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Now, before I run this, let me jump back to table plus and I want to show you that our role user table is completely empty, right? There's nothing there. Back to Chrome. Now that we've set up those relationships, I'm going to hit refresh. And now let's go back to table plus. Hit refresh. And now here we go. So we have a user with the ID of one is attached to role of one. And then the same thing, user ID of one has a role of ID two. So we've successfully attached those two things together. Great. So of course, this is the way that you attach and associate models to one another. So similarly, of course, you can detach models using the detach keyword. So what I'll actually do is let's detach the first row from our user. And we'll use that detach method again to give you a before and after. Here's table plus before we have two entries in our database. And remember, the updated and created are, are still not working. I'll show you how to do that now. So then let's jump back to Chrome. Now that we've made the change in our code, I'll hit refresh back to table plus hit refresh. And there we go. So we've detached the first row of our user. So that's the easy way in and out. Let's make the timestamps work now. Let's jump to PHP Storm. And in our relationship, all we have to do is add another method call and say with timestamps. And then let's do the same thing in roles. We'll say with timestamps. This lets Laravel know that we do want timestamps in our pivot table. Hit save. And back here, let's go ahead and attach that role one more time. And here's the before. Refresh. All right, let's run the code. And let's head back. Refresh. And there we go. So that is attached again. But this time, of course, we do have a created at and updated at. Let me do something else. Let's add some more roles to our application. How about this? Modify user, delete comments. And let's add maybe one more edit comments, comments. There we go. All right. So now we have all of these different roles. So most of the time, a user is going to have an array of roles that you want them to have. So let's say in the case of our application, I want our user to be able to do maybe one, three and five. That's it. Just one, three and five. Those are the roles that I want my user to have. So a lot of times what you'll actually do is instead of having roles, we're going to have IDs so we can actually pass in an array here of IDs. So we'll say ID one, ID three and ID five, referring to the IDs of our roles. So a user can have IDs one, three and five from our roles table. All right. Let me go ahead and save that again. Let me show you a before and after. Here is our roles user table currently. Let's run the code. Refresh. Looks like there was an error, but the error is at the die and dump because we no longer have roles, but it should have still worked. So let's head back to table plus hit refresh. And sure enough, we have ID one, ID three and ID five were attached to our user. But we notice a problem right away. And the problem is that all of a sudden our user has a duplicate. There's nothing constraining in the database that wouldn't allow a user to gain the same permission multiple times. So typically this is not the way that you would do it. The way that you would actually do it is using another awesome method that Laravel has, and that is the method sync. So let's jump back to PHP storm and let's change that now. So instead of attach, let's use sync. Sync will sync up any roles that that user has to only be one, three and five. So let's do that now. Let me get rid of this die and dump so it doesn't error out on us. Hit save. Let me give you the before again. Hit refresh. So this is what we have right now, right? Notice there's five entries in this table. 
Then let's jump to Chrome to run that code. Hit refresh, back to table plus, refresh. And there we are. So this user now has one, three, and five. However, we still have this duplicate here of one. Let me actually delete everything out of this table just to show you that it does work. Hit refresh, go back, refresh, and there we are. One, three, and five. So let's change something else in our code to see what happens. Let's go back to PHP Storm. Instead of one, three, and five, I'm going to say two and four. These are the two roles that I want to attach to this user. All right. Let's jump back to Chrome, refresh, back to table plus, refresh, and sure enough, we only have two and four. One, three, and five disappeared. So that is an awesome method. And you're going to use that all the time. There's another method that you might use sometimes as well, and that is the sync without detach. Sometimes you may just want to add a role to a user. You may not want to delete everything and start from scratch. Like for example, if all of a sudden this user should be able to, let's say, modify a user, that's ID three, we should just be able to tell Laravel, hey, go ahead and add the ID of three, but do not detach anything. Go ahead and keep all of the other permissions the way that it should be just give them the ability to modify a user and that's what the sync without detach does for us let's check that out php storm like i said i want to give them id of three and let's say sync without detach let's hit save back to chrome hit refresh looks like we get an error sync without detach oh i know what it is sync without detaching detaching not detach all right Let's run that again. So that runs perfectly. So let's go to table plus and look at our roles and users. And there we are. So now that user has role two and four, which was the original, but now we've added three, which was the role that we added. Notice that in this scenario, we only passed in a role of three. That's the only thing that we passed to that. We've been doing all of this starting from the user. But of course, we could flip this and start from the role as well, and it would work exactly the same thing. So let's do an example of that very quickly. Let's say I'm just going to comment this out and let's grab a role. And our role is going to be, let's just say, give me the role find ID of four. OK, and then we can say role users. And then I'm just going to use the sync method. And I'm just going to say just user one. That's all I want you to attach to that role. All right. Now notice that I did import role up here at the top. But of course, if you have any issues with role, you can do the full namespace like so. So we'll change that. It'll be exactly the same thing. Let's jump back to Chrome, hit refresh and back to table plus hit refresh. Of course, role ID four is already attached to user one. Let's do another one so that it does actually change. Let's do role ID of five. All right. So five is not currently here. Five is not there. Let's say one Let's change that to five. There we go. I think now we're going to see a difference. Refresh back to table plus refresh. And there we go. So five. Perfect. So we have user ID five has a role of four. That makes total sense. That's what we wanted to do. So obviously this relationship can go either direction. Now in a more advanced topic, we can add additional fields in this pivot table. So in the next episode, we're going to be covering how to actually add additional fields to the pivot table. So that way you can store data that is related to the fact that two things belong together. So start to implement this in your application. And when you're ready, let's move on to the next episode.